Real quick, honestly, had you guys ever heard of the comic book character Peacemaker before your song was chosen for a series <laughs> no. about him? I, I had to Google it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. I give my soul to you. Laid my whole life in the bomb of Agent Ron, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, which thank one you for is having back? Us. My pleasure, my yeah. pleasure. Um, so, uh, usually I speak to bands leading up to a release. I'm talking to you guys roughly a week since the release of the new album um let's be honest for a number of things that we'll get into this is probably the most high profile release that you've done um does that then also mean that this was the release with the most pressure for you guys oh you feel pressure <laughs> no not really <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we go in with uh, there are three songwriters in uh, this band, so right, uh, and we are productive all the time. We have, um, we have studios, uh, the three of us, so we are recording demos all the time, and um, uh, and of course record the album at uh, my place. So uh, and the thing was with this album, you know, we started to 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 write, you know, songs specific specifically for this album uh even before the peacemaker success so right. we didn't know shit. so there was no pressure at all because you know never say die and you know the time after never say die was a pretty damn black hole for us because we right. couldn't get out and play and you know so we, instead we wrote music and uh we were in that flow Now, the difference in approach of, of writing the music uh, is that, I mean, in my humble opinion, uh, this is a quite, it, the album comes pretty quickly after Never Say Die, but it is a very different album. I find this new album to be a lot more diverse uh, mm. than the previous album, maybe a little bit more fresh because we hear uh, a couple of new things. Is that a, well, first of all, do you agree with that? And second, is is are the changes do you think that that's in the dynamic of writing that was different that have inspired that in, in some way uh, i don't know uh, i think one of the uh, biggest differences between writing never say die and this one is that halfway through this album we we had this massive success with the peacemaker right. song and things were getting um you know much lighter for us so to speak yeah, and yeah. Uh, and so and so we thought you know let's make this album uh, a bit a bit lighter too i mean to bring in you know um, more kind of poppy songs as well i mean so yeah, yeah, we, yeah. you know not only the hard stuff but also uh, and new new styles with the forevermore we bring in you know the celtic music too and we try to try to offer something new on this one yeah 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 perfect example of one of the songs that it has a bit of a different approach or different vibe uh in this process are there sounds for the band that you kind of discovered that you're like well this is what we we definitely want to do more of this um you know thinking ahead to to future albums uh i, I don't know what uh came over me uh, the day <laughs> i wrote that song <laughs> It's uh, it, it uh, I found it on the, my phone the other day, uh, right. 15 February last year. I wrote that, and uh, it just came. And uh, uh, I don't think uh, we don't think too much. We no. just okay. do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't think at all. We just we just make. Yeah, but right, I think right. if, if you if you sit down, uh, okay. We had uh, good reviews on our comeback album. Now we yeah. have to do uh, uh, follow this. Um, we don't think too much about it because then you right. get uh, a load on your shoulder that uh, maybe throws you away. If, even with Never Say Die, we never sat down and had a you know thought about you know or, or conversation about what what is we going to be right in you know after the comeback. We were like. 
let's just sit down and write the music that we love and uh, it happened to to become what it became and and i think you know the the, the results is uh, pretty much dependent on what we've been th through i mean we, we've done so much different things uh, right. from from when we broke up until now so we bring that with us into this new sound of, of we gone so that's what you hear i mean Sean played, you know, did the Dracula stuff and played with Yarn. Probably brought him some more, you know, heavier guitars to the to the table. And me, I wrote a lot of songs with Eric Mortensen. We did, you know, different kind of stuff, and and we, we bring that to the table, and and that's the that's the new, you know, pie that we're making. When, when we when we decided the songs the track list for for out of the dark we we had a lot of other songs that we could have used right. as well that were even more you know uh, kind of hit potential commercial commercial uh, songs but you know we we decided to use that for some sync stuff that maybe will will be heard somewhere <laughs> yeah, 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 we don't know yet, but we 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 decided to to put together an album almost like a journey. You know, it, it, we will take you to different cities, and once in a while we'll take you to a village, and sometimes we will take you to a lake, and then we we'll go back into the you know suburban <laughs> atmosphere again. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. to make it kind of interesting too. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in other words, it won't be too long before I talk to you guys again for for next. Uh, the, the next release of the band that's clear uh <laughs> so, also, at least a single or two maybe <laughs> there you go you, know, you, you never go. know you know trump when you said we don't think a lot um uh, and okay yeah uh, you know we have a laugh and that's fun um i do want to go a little deeper there because you know if you listen to the band and especially if you listen attentively and if you read the lyrics and so on it's clear that the band does think um and at times i'm sure that you guys have the same problem that many bands in the genre that you play and and you know since since the late 70s to today where let's be honest there's a ton of people that even when they love your music and they come to your show and they have a good time are never going to take the time to really go into the meaning of certain songs and you will be labeled a party band because you play party music um is that sometimes because you know and the, the, you've mentioned a few times now already the peacemaker song yeah that song is a perfect example um uh american dream you're stuck in the american dream on, on this album and there's plenty more examples um is that sometimes a little frustrating or is that always just fine it's always fine uh when you go to our show uh, you, you know we throw a party so yeah. uh it's like um van halen was always labeled as a party band right but uh, to me the they are the best band uh, ever yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, I don't mind, but uh, uh, I'm uh, satisfied with the, some, some of the people uh, go deep in uh, right. <laughs> and uh, read the lyrics and think about uh, what we are talking about. The cool thing is when, when, when you hear people that have discovered the secret treasures, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they uh, they appreciate it. That's that's good. I mean, yeah, especially here in Norway, we will uh, we will. Um, notice that people don't even listen to the lyrics even right. though you you work hard on your lyrics and try to have you know some punchlines here and there and, and and you know to have some meaning and some f fun with it in norway people don't appreciate that because they don't listen to the lyrics so right. for, for me as a, a lyricist i i think i think it's so great to hear people abroad you know saying ah, Hear that line there, and that you, yeah, they take yeah, yeah. notice of certain things that you you hped somebody would find. You know, English is our second language, so a lot sure. of people don't uh, think about uh, lyrics in that way. And 
a funny thing is that uh, when Frank Zappa released Bobby Brown, right, there were two countries uh, that the song was number one, and that was in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> And they have, uh, didn't have a clue, no clue what, what was, it about, was yeah. about it. You let me cold, but baby, now you're back for a piece of the party. You guys got started as part of this Scandinavian wave of glam bands. Um, you know, early to what? well, even late 90s, we see Backyard Babies taking on a sleazier kind of music. We've got a hardcore superstar that all of a sudden everybody was talking about. Crash Diet, you guys, Poodles. There's plenty of examples to go around. What is it with Scandinavia in the early 2000s that was so obsessed with, you know, 80s heavy metal at a time when 80s nostalgia was at all not yet cool, like it became 10, 15 years later when you've got now you know, things like Stranger Things and The Weeknd with his, you know, blinding light song that seems to have been transported out of the 80s. Yeah. How, uh, somehow this was already happening in Scandinavia. Do you have an idea why this happened? For us, it was a coincidence. I mean, we started off uh, as a jam band. We we had our mm -hmm. our weekly jam sessions at a club in Halden, you know, and uh, we were actually just playing the music that we loved. And, and uh, finally, we had a chance to just... Uh, play that songs you know that music because it was so outdated back then right and then suddenly somebody hired us for for this 80s themed party and okay. we thought oh great fun and like three days before that gig i told the guys you know we, we can't we can't have that name you know because we were called the absolute friday band <laughs> okay <laughs> because yeah, that night <laughs> that friday was called the absolute friday so you know oh i see it's i bringing see some some as something to wear and we actually we actually came up with the, the the band name and you know the the nicknames and everything three days before that gig oh, wow. and for me i thought we were going to be like a, you know typical you know 80s themed party band we never thought it would be a career right <laughs> but uh we sold out <laughs> and we sold out yeah. and we sold out people were crazy about it but we yeah. played only co cover songs but back then we had this right. ironic distance to everything so we 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 were actually playing songs that had been stolen from us because we were actually we, we had this story about the band uh that we were actually studying off in new york right the polish quarter of brooklyn browns with a set <laughs> and and we were drug addicts and we had a great uh, hard time <laughs> not great uh, probably great too and then we moved to Norway and took right. Norwegian names, Bernd, Oystein, Tron, and Olga. And uh, and then in 2001, we had this great comeback. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Taking back our old songs that were stolen from us. I mean, Paul Stanley stole our song, I was made for loving you from a party, we were too drunk, you know, to right, notice. Right, right. Later heard it on radio. And then after a while, when we had this kind of bizarre image, uh, we started to to add some original material, but we never presented them as original material. We we never told anyone that this is our songs. Mm -hmm. So people who come to us backstage and you know ask for you know that song that what, was that a kiss song? Yeah, probably a kiss song. You know, <laughs> we just wanted to check out the songs, and then later you know yeah. we we recorded our first album on a cracked Cube Cube studio in in his. House. <laughs> I was singing in his bedroom, you know. <laughs> it's way too late to regret and chase your hands. Oh, fate comes such a bitch that's been fun. Like you, you guys came up with this over the top image and I mean <laughs> yeah. it, it's kind of serendipitous in a way that then the in the big international attention comes from a superhero uh show, uh like Peacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> It was almost destined to be. Nevertheless, it's a unique story, and I'm sure that you guys get more questions still about that than about the new uh, album. Um, it just real quick, honestly, had you guys ever heard of the comic book character Peacemaker before your song was chosen no. for a series <laughs> no. about him? I, I had to Google it, you know, because 
when when the, the that same company got in touch with us we actually right. thought they were going to use that song for commercials or or something right, you know? right 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 and then only later they told told us about the series and we had to google it and james gone <laughs> yeah cena and, 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 so yeah. long. and still no, no, we no. didn't know anything no. about how they were going to use it right um, so uh, before it uh, came out, uh, you know, the video with the dance, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it went 10 million on YouTube uh, the first week or something. And uh, yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> I remember yeah. our drummer sent us, you know, he, he saw it first. So he kind of okay. sent, he, he was filming the TV, you know, and guys, look at this. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> what? Is it in the opening? The credits? <laughs> The crazy right. thing is, you no, know, when everything went down, everything was like going crazy around us. Yeah. At the same time, we didn't have a management, we didn't have a, a booking right. agent because they we just lost them. <laughs> so we were literally alone, and it was like, think everything is happening now. <laughs> we need some. Help. Yeah. How how often has that manager and a booking agent asked if they would pretty please can come back to? Uh, to help you uh, with everything you know, all, after the success, we actually we, we we had this one. I always thought, you know, that that song was so great, and I thought it should have been a bigger hit than it was. Okay, yeah. You know, so I, sometimes, you know, even when I did the solo shows, I would bring back that song and you know should have been a hit you know and uh yeah, for yeah, it yeah. to become a huge hit our biggest hit in 2022 is <laughs> fucking yeah, yeah. It, I think. <laughs> now um what is also extremely realistic at this point is that um for the vast majority of people you will be the band that did that song from that show um and it is going yeah, to but we be. Yeah, we're used. We're used oh. to that, you know, because we were. We have always been the band that did that song, the other song in Eurovision Song Contest. You know, do you want to taste it? Is going to remain the song that a worldwide audience is gonna want to hear you play. And yeah. uh, I remember from a. There was a while that the Eagles, they just kind of like, they walked on stage and the first thing they did was they played Hotel California because the entire band was so sick of it. They're like, okay, yeah. now we got that out of the way. Now we can play what we really want to play. Is yeah. there, is there ever like a, like this voice in your mind going like, like, oh, that song again? Like, no, uh, I the, don't think they, so. They asked, um, uh, Don Henley. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's your what's your favorite song on the set list? The last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, uh, uh, we're all playing that song, man. And uh, yeah, yeah. you have to appreciate uh, what the public uh, wants. And uh, the first time um, I remember, I was playing uh, when I was a kid uh, in uh, uh, together with uh, you know like a pop star in Norway. And mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, written a song uh, that was huge on the radio, but okay. I didn't care too much about it yeah. until we played it live. Yeah, when the public, you know, really sang and knew the song, and uh, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. went ballistic. And then it gets, you know, uh, uh, the song takes another uh, uh, away on its own. From 2005, every time I'm doing uh, anything else, like the corporation gigs or whatever, have to do them. Come on, come on. It's fucking high, you know? So finally, they've changed that. Do you really want to do it? There's so much <laughs> thing. <Things>, um, <laughs> I feel blessed. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Can awesome. we do that instead now? <laughs> Thank you.
you mentioned uh, you know playing these songs live that's when you really see what the songs mean and 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 it, it the songs take on a whole different life so you're obviously going to be promoting this 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 new album and 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 older songs as well given the recent you know rising popularity um you've found out that touring in the united states is not easy as a european band uh, necessarily um <laughs> for the remainder of the year um what uh, should we keep our eyes open for what are the plans now we're actually coming over finally because we had such a hard time getting the working visas and now yeah. finally everything is is about to get settled and we're really looking forward to coming over for our first very first u.s tour and uh yeah, we don't know what to expect. Will there mm -hmm. be three persons there, five, ten, hundred? But you know, it's we just need to go over there and to give it a chance. And yeah, yeah, if yeah. people show up and people appreciate us coming over, we definitely will come over again and again and again. Gentlemen, um, I'm gonna let you continue to celebrate the release of out of the dark in a very dark jazz club with some cocktails <laughs> and some good music uh, but i want to thank you for you know in between some drinks taking the time to answer some of my questions i very much appreciate it and i look forward to following all your overseas adventures um uh, age and throne thank you so much for your time today i really appreciate it have a thank wonderful you. rest of uh, your evening first and then the continuous uh you know release cycle for this album Likewise, and let's hope we're coming over to Canada once. Let's hope indeed. Yeah. Awesome. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.